Hello, and welcome to another Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. I'm Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo, your host. Today, I want to talk about the rework of the 300i series. That would be the second rework. Here is my original review, which you can find a very, very, very long time ago. I may link it, I may not. There were some pretty weird sound issues going on in the very early days of my videos. But, nonetheless, I, uh... I think I did a very good job at the initial release review. And it was an exciting time because we had the 325A, the Avenger, the Aurora, the Hornet, all these aircraft coming at us very quickly and going into the hangar model. This being the deluxe hangar from way back when. A hangar I really miss. But I did my walk around and talked about all the weapons and all the hardware that was inside of it, and then that changed, and then Item System 2.0 came in, and then, oh my god, PBR, all this wonderful stuff happened since then, and the ship's been updated a couple of times. And we all paid for it way, way, way back then. And after a while, we got kind of tired of it, we may have upgraded it or melted it and bought other ships with the proceeds from melting that ship. Nonetheless, the 300 series became nothing more than a passing... Well, it, it went through its own passing. It wasn't very good in Arena Commander. It didn't have a lot of place to put... You know, a lot of space to put cargo. And really... It just didn't make sense in the universe, in the design that it was in back then. Well, that's all changed. Let's take a look at the 300 today. In fact, we'll take a look at the 325A, just so we can get a idea of what things may have changed. Well, everybody, this is the new 325A. Now, the hangar is kind of broken with these J.J. Abrams-like lens flares going on inside of it but still the aircraft itself i thought i wasn't gonna like it i didn't think i was gonna fall for it i thought it was gonna be completely different and i find myself looking at this 325a and falling in love with it again 23 meters long 15.5 meters wide seven meters high it's classified as a small spacecraft. It has 66,140 kilograms of weight. That's not bad. can carry two SCU, I believe, has a cruise or SEM speed of 275 meters a second, afterburner speed of 1225 meters a second, carries one person, maximum crew is one, and who cares about anything else? Because I am sure that all of this stuff is irrelevant because it's probably going to still change a million times before the game is out. Balancing still has to be done. Now, one thing I absolutely love about this ship is that the design elements of the 600 series can be see he seen here in so many different ways. And you're going to see that inside. Now, I feel like the textures just weren't loading in correctly here, but nonetheless, it is a beautiful ship. Now, one of the things that got me a little bit worried here is inside the hangar, we're looking at Behringer laser cannons. My ship is supposed to carry those Omniski uh, laser cannons. They are just amazing, amazing weapons, and I believe they might not be done. Like, they might not have those uh, fully fleshed out yet. But you're supposed to have two Amiski laser cannons on the wings and a Dominator EM, or uh, mass driver, sitting in the nose. That's what's supposed to be on the ship. I'm not sure where they're going to move us, though, or how they're going to load this out in the future. I'm hoping that they stay with that, because that would be just a killer, killer, killer weapons load out. Let's get inside the ship. The ship inside is kind of beautiful. I, I am, I have to say this. This ship 
surprised me. As soon as I walked in, and this is the 325A, it's a little bit more luxurious bounty hunter, and oh my god, I've got my own skylight. I mean, a full skylight. This is pretty awesome. That is something that totally 100% just took me by surprise. And of course, I drink wine. I have everything but like a place to sit. I guess I'm supposed to sit on my bed, or maybe there's a place for a chair to come out. But you got the bed, you got your little area to cook and clean up over here. You have your skylight. I mean, you are set in this spacecraft. I mean, it's one big room like it was before, but the space inside just makes more sense. And of course, here is the lava lavatory. <laughs> um, I guess the pot, <laughs> the bowl, will move out of the way so you could take a shower. I think that would be it. All right, so here's the other place that I'm a little bit upset with. When you got in the cockpit of the 300 series before, you had these beautiful buttons, dials, switches, knobs, and gauges in front of you. But for whatever reason, CIG has opted to make this a very um, Tesla-looking interior very um, purposeful and very um, devoid of, of any huge amounts of instruments. Now, I'm not sure if a couple of these are placeholders right now. I see a couple of places where there could be some instruments. There's two black areas in the front and, of course, these side panels. They rely mostly on the inside of your helmet, in other words, your helmet um, viewing system, or whatever they call it, as a means of uh, getting all your information. Now, for me, I always talk about this when I speak about combat. Situational awareness is the most important thing when you're flying a fighter or any small spacecraft that's going to take part in combat. So I really didn't have a lot of expectations for this ship because of the lack of instruments, and I was wrong. Now here's where you put your 2SCU, or whatever it turns out to be, 4SCU, 6SCU, 12SCU, whatever they do with this spacecraft. I think it's going to be 2. That's what it's listed at. I play with this for a couple of minutes, just looking at it, and I think it's pretty cool. I think this is a amazing way of making things work for us. You still have these uh, mini thrusters all over the place on the on the uh, 325 and the 300 series. They don't tell you exactly how many of them like they did in the past. Let's see what it says by thrusters. Oh, they say there's 12 gimbal mounted thrusters and they don't give you a name of them like they used to. Systems, weaponry, all that stuff is in here. We have a uh, small charger, 2S Tundra, 2S Secure Hide. These are the uh, in order, power plant, cooler, and shield generators. I kind of remember there being a force wall in this in the beginning, but I'm not 100% sure if that's what it is. I'm telling you right now, in one of my previous videos, when I was saying farewell to this, I was kind of upset about the direction they were taking in this, thinking that they were making it too sleek. But Chris Smith has done an amazing job at keeping what I fell in love with on the original 300 series and keeping it true to that design and not really moving away from it as much as I thought from looking at pictures. Oh my god, this is an amazing ship. All right, so we can't just talk about how it looks here inside the hangar. No, we can't. Let's go somewhere else. So how does she fly? That's always the question. And I'm going to say this. I talked about this in my last video. It would have been totally wrong of me, irresponsible of me, to do this video and talk about how she flies without me spending the 10 hours it took me to get used to the new flight model. And I'm gonna say this right now. 
I love the new flight model. I, I don't know what it is, but after you get situated with it, after you go through the pain and, oh, just the pain. We're going to stick with the word pain of going through all your key mappings and getting them remapped again and trying to understand what's going on in this flight model. And after all that is done, you kind of love it. So I needed to do that first before I grabbed the 300 series and jumped into Arena Commander and gave it a really good thrashing around to see how it flew. And this is absolutely the first time I flew this spacecraft in Arena Commander with the intention of actually trying to finish a full Arena Commander. I did all right. Now, there is no doubt, and you can ask anybody in the enablers, that I am a mediocre combat pilot. I, I am okay. I'm not perfect. I'm mediocre. And I'm mediocre when you take into account I'm comparing myself to some of the best pilots out there, not the average pilot that would come into the game. Because honestly, I have a lot more flight hours and sims. I should be better than I am. But I don't give it enough time to actually get good at it because I really like the other elements of the game. So when I took the 300 into this arena commander, I expected to have a horrible time to get to killing uh, the first wave of elites, you know, the little king or little prince or whatever you call him, and uh, just cutting out, and that would be it. But what I found is that the 300 series is a joy, an absolute joy to fly. I told you it was a horrible pirate. Don't make fun of that right there. Yes, I like to crash into things. And one of my friends, Ainyan, can tell that tell you that. Alright, so the aircraft or spacecraft, it looks so much like an airplane, I, I keep calling it an aircraft. It has an a amazing roll rate. And if you think of it this way, turn rate and roll rate actually can mean two different things. If you, if you can outturn somebody, that's great. Because in a turning fight, that matters. But in a fight in 3D space, where you're going six, where you have six degrees of free, freedom, being able to roll your aircraft as fast as you can is actually a benefit because it allows you to roll and move into any direction really, really fast. The roll rate in this ship is just amazing. Now I'm sure it's been updated in, m in many of the other ships too. I flew the Arrow for a little bit. That's the ship I chose to fly when I was learning the flight model because I liked the fact that all the weapons were very close in and it was a small spaceship and it was gonna give me the opportunity to learn a little bit better. Plus, the Arrow has replaced my favorite light fighter, the uh, Gladius, as my favorite. I mean, there you go. <laughs> um, I do want to tell you that there's two different uh, reticles. And for the 300 series, the lead reticle, in fact, I'm going to say it this way. Trailing reticle, uh, I would probably never use that anymore. I think the lead reticle in the new flight system makes a lot more sense. It, it just was a lot easier for me to find the target and just keep my nose pointed at it and just continuously destroy it. I didn't turn on ESP. I didn't turn on the new gimbal system that actually fires you know, for you or in the direction. At least I don't believe I did. Um, I, I just did what I could here. And uh, what I found is uh, the ship really does handle well. It has a lot of firepower. And this is the base 300 series. This is not the 325A. 325A should have uh, better armor. And it should have those two um, Omniski 6s, I think it is, or Omniski 7s. It's one of the two. They have the upgraded cannons the mass driver, and the upgraded shields, and the upgraded armor. That's what the 325A was supposed to have in the beginning if you bought one. 
So all in all, I'm going to say this. The 300 series is a joy to fly. It's going to be your bounty hunter and your mercenary ship very early in the game. I think you might even be able to outfit it, upgrade it, overclock it, modify it to be something that you use for a very long time. And the luxury of the ship holds true to the origin name, to, the, to their whole culture. And it looks like it belongs in that series of ships. Ever since they released the 600, I've been in love with the Origins again. And this rework of the 300 series brings the 300 series in line with that new vision for Origin. I'm very excited. I can't wait to see their entry level ship when it first, you know, when it finally comes out. That will be the 100 series. It won't be as awesome as this, but I am almost 100% sure it's going to be just as amazing as this for someone that wants to spend right around half the amount of money. So folks, if you feel like it, I'm going to end it in just a second here, but I'm going to keep the I'm going to keep the video rolling after the credits so you can see how I did in this uh, battle, just so you have an idea of just how good this ship is. Now, I don't make it through all the way to the end because I told you, I'm mediocre. So if you think about one of the better pilots out there, one of the best pilots out there and how they would do, I, I, I swear, this is going to be one of the ships that people are grabbing a lot for these Arena Commander or maybe ECN missions. Really like it. Can't wait to see what they do with the 315P. And I can't wait to start playing with the customization system. That should be uh, very shortly for me. My next video will be on R Corp. And that should be coming in a day or so. And I really appreciate you all watching my videos. If you do like this one, please feel free to click that thumbs up button below and if you like my videos overall please do subscribe and when you do subscribe make sure to click that thumbs up icon so you get notified of all my future videos the channel does have a patreon over at patreon.com forward slash batgirl that helped me get equipment pay for internet bills and all sorts of other wonderful things that i pay for to keep this channel going now that school is coming to an end in a month you're going to be getting a lot of me, folks. I promise that, and this is it. I graduate on May 10th. And with that said, folks, you all be safe out there, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.
hostiles inbound. Contact. Warning. You are approaching simulation boundary. Stars inbound.
units en route. Contact. Contact. Warning. You are approaching simulation boundary.